，诶 ，Sammy 姐嘛，喂就是啊，说白了，谁是被别人控制？所以华为的市场是首当其冲。从二零一九年你就知道，中美国就不是提高国，他能不知道有中国吗？对吧？他知道你就是要准备，说白了，抵押所有的东西，之前在你这个体系里头，把这个赖表，把钱给卖，卖完以后，直接再把你击溃。是吧？我给你借，一直借借借借，然后利息每个月都还，借到最后一个天文数字上本金不还，然后再会反反向收购，然后你支撑不下去的时候，他在控制你的经济，控制你的科技，控制你的系统，这是这就是美国的军事，是吧？有几大战略的军事，粮食。哎，三米在吗Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, 
I can sure. hear you. Yeah, we yes. can. Yes. Great. Yeah. Good. Good to see you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, but let's start in another five minutes. So people are still coming on. So today we are going to speak in English now because a lot of people are uh, English age, speaking Asian here, right? Any objection? No problem. We can learn English everyone together, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Tony, when I uh, have a new sh shirt for the matrix, I need to get the new shirt, right? Sorry? So if I'm going to get the shirt that the uh, MS info from the, the matrix, I need to- oh, matrix, okay. I need to put a new shirt, right? To switch to the-, the I don't understand what you mean. 因为我的按钮做那个秀做的中间我有switch的matrix和那个好的中间对我可以自己switch到那个new So three minutes to go. <laughs> oh my God, I'm the next. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you, everyone uh, here today. Um, I excited to see uh, Joseph here, Gabriel, and um, yeah, what uh, what a year for all of us. That uh, um, you know, um, pandemic was a far away thing for most of the Canadians, but now it's like uh, um, you know to tell the story that uh, I went back to China and for uh, visiting my family back in uh, December of 2019. Uh, my hometown is in Zhengzhou. Uh, it's not uh, far away from uh, Wuhan, but I bypassed Wuhan. I fly to uh, Shenzhen and then stay there until December the 29th. Or I remember 29th or 30th, I fly back to Canada. You know, when I landed in Toronto, I see the news in China is such, such a big uh, pandemic in China. And then I say, did I catch the virus myself? I'm kind of uh, scared, like, you know, when I, when I uh, came back. And um, initially, um, everyone around us thinking that the virus is in Wuhan, in China, has nothing to do with Canada, and then as a matter of fact, majority of Canadian, even US government official and then medical field people are not taking that as seriously until February, March, that we cannot buy any mask, uh, medical supply, like uh, hand uh, sanitizer anymore in any drugstore. So this is uh, such a similarity when we compare with uh, 
2003 that the stars hit um, Guangdong, China, and then quickly spread to Canada. And then Toronto, we lost about 50 plus lives uh, in our uh, in, the, in that year just due to the just the to the uh, stars. The reason I brought this up is because I was a medical doctor before I came to Canada. And then I, I think that it is a very interesting thing for us to say, um, it is such a disaster uh, thing for all of us. Okay, everyone, <laughs> Tony, is, he's in another uh, Zoom meeting, so he's, he's talking to the head office at the uh, uh, seminar, I think. Anyway, so let's start now. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you again after we. And uh, so today's section is uh, is about commercial uh, theory training section. It's in number six or number five. Actually, we record number five. Uh, the topic is about selling a small business. So I can still use today uh, examples for Canadian store. Before I started the, the section in this uh, topic, I can share the one uh, question answer to all of you because everyone uh, knew that the current market is still hot, say that's market. So everywhere still bidding war, bidding war, and I received a lot of phone call from our agents every day. Uh, even uh, Tony said, uh, Sammy as well. So everyone asking how do you deal with, how to create the bidding war? How do you, you know, do whatever? So we had two training sections already before. So if someone wants to uh, go back and look at the video on YouTube, you can listen, you can watch it, something there. So you can find some answer there as well. But there's a quick question I can answer here now because that I saw it from the WeChat group the day before. Uh, someone asked, the listening agent say, because one of the agent for bidding, he reduced his commission, let's say by 2%, and that the listening agent did not disclose to everyone else. So in the end, all other agents found that the price, is, let's say, Two percent less less than what they are bidding for other agent, so it looks like they're not fair to other agent. So uh, people ask the question like this. So in that case, how can we, you know, try to to avoid such things happen again? So what we suggest, Tony and Sammy and myself, we put this our answer in the WeChat already. So first of all, is you a listen agent. Please convince that the, the agent who wants to reduce his commission, not doing that in the bidding war, because it will affect everyone, affect all the agent. So that means your agent in the United States, your image will get down and down. That means oh, everyone cutting commission. So that's not a good way. So we do not promote such thing. Okay, then number one. Second, if you are buy agent. I suggest you don't do that either on the by bidding war. Because if you do reduce the commission, I always said to our agent, when you, whatever bidding war or uh, doing offer negotiation, don't never, never do that reduce commission at the beginning. That means that you will lose your bargaining power. Let's say you can get a good deal, but because you reduce commission at the beginning, you lost your bargaining power. So I don't say just doing like that. So as I, again, as I say, if you're a buy agent, don't use this strategy to for the bidding war. So those kind of suggestion answer we can tell you. As a listing agent, of course, you need to disclose on bidding war multiple offer situation. Always disclose your client, your customer. First, number one. Secondly, you need to disclose same as uh, the agents from our, our same office. So no, no matter what, if they reduce commission or the collateral agreement, you need disclose to everyone. So that will make it fair to all the agents participating in the bidding work. So that kind of in so far in a, a multiple offer situation, I can you know share with you uh, whatever we have to do. Please keep that in mind. If you're a listening agent, if you're a buy agent, so 
you know how can you deal with that. So you have any question, call Tony, call Sammy, call myself. We'll tell you how to deal with that. Okay, thank you for that. So that's the one I, before I start the, this topic, so I can share with you that, that what I've heard from the last few days. Thank you. Oh, it's amazing that today we have a topic in commercial sales. And we had already four sections before. So at the, of course, at the, a lot of people attend the training, not only in last four training, even last year, a few years ago, we have all the commercial training in on you, YouTube. You can, you can look to the link for a, a website. You will see what training we have in commercial section. Uh, as I say, we are, our topic today is selling business. So when you say talking about selling business, we have to make sure that the, everyone, our agent, uh, have, have to know what kind of business, we, what we call small business, how the market, right? Small business market. So small business, we, uh, everyone should know that what the business including what? Including a lot of students, like stuff from like basic one, convenience store, coffee shop, restaurant, bar, and uh, retail store, supermarket, or everything included in the small business section. And the small business market, uh, so far that we may know that uh, it's dependent on a lot of factors. How that, you know, that uh, whatever the business going good or bad, so it depends on a lot of things, like economic factor, and that, you know, if the economic going up, so we, uh, I always said to, you know, at the last section, if economic going up, that the small business will be, of course, uh, everyone the buying power is the higher, so we get a lot of demand. But the, for in small business owner, mostly if that unemployment going up, that means a lot of people, if they lost job, small business will have more demand normally. The reason is because they need to find something they can do themselves, right? So that's the thing you can see that there's a, a trend in the market. The other thing is immigration policy. If a lot of, uh, every year, a lot of uh, immigrants from all other countries in, in the world. So the people coming to Canada, to Toronto, they normally will see what they can do. They, they're going to do, create their job, create their, you know, set up their business, those kinds of things they're doing, right? So small business also depend on the market. Uh, that's franchise, a lot of franchise store. Uh, I can remember that still, 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, a lot of franchise, we call it corporate business for sale. A lot of, like uh, I used to deal with Second Cup, Timothy, those kind of well-known famous before, but nowadays it's not often seen now because that the, a lot of competition come in, you know, the franchise is just a different way now. So of course, a lot of small business also operate in individually, independently by themselves. So that's what I said, that the immigrants coming to Canada, to Toronto, they will set up their own business. So those kind of small business market. So if you are uh, pay attention to those kinds of things, you will know that the, what uh, the, the status of the current market is in small business. Uh, one thing I can share with you, I cannot say the, uh, the name of the uh, franchise uh, coffee shop. This used to be a huge, lots of six, 700, stores in, in Toronto. Nowadays coming down and down. So I don't know how many left, maybe not left, about hundred something left over in Toronto. So those kinds of things that because of competition, because of the, the you know, management, that small business markets coming, you know, it's changed a lot. So everybody knew that Toronto is that, that uh, what is it, number six or number five largest city in North America. So that's why we attract a lot of immigrants, right? Every year, uh, we heard about the, the government of Canada. They they getting more immigrants this coming year, uh, three hundred fifty thousand, something like that. So majority of immigrants they always come into Toronto. So not only uh, as agent we should know that uh, it's not only for commercial section but for real real estate, and that's why we have a lot of demand in, in selling real estate. So Tony mentioned again a few times last time. So for the you know, real estate market still coming, we be getting better and better still for the next few months, right? So at least you know, even that the, some economists say this year, next year, the 
the, the, the price of the com, uh, residential will come going up from three percent to six percent. That's uh, I heard from that a lot of news can say that. So that's why Toronto is a major city in North America, right? Everybody knew. So again, we are saying small business, including a lot of things: you know, coffee shop, convenience store, retail store, restaurant. Those kind of things are an example we can share with everyone here, right? So you, you see the majors in uh, the franchise as well, like pizza store, coffee shop, also. So those are the kind of things uh, we can remember when you're talking about small business. Those are the kind of things they are in front of me. <laughs> okay, uh, today we, we are talking about convenience store. The people last yesterday, someone said, oh, when you're talking about convenience store, not a restaurant, not the bar, whatever. But uh, uh, I can share with you that the why convenience store, convenience stores, first of all, of course, very small transaction. Uh, as an agent, not, normally I, if you don't have client, if you don't want to do it, uh, so just don't touch it. Uh, because that, as I say, small transaction, not much commission you can get, but the work you have spent the same amount of work to work on the uh, such convenience store. I remember the one time, 15 years or almost 20 years ago, I, in my hand, I have five or six convenience stores in the time. On the one day, I received five offers for different store. Uh, you know, how, how you will see how busy you can deal with that certain small business at the time. But in the end, only one offer accepted. So that means that the opportunity, the chance you can get, uh, sec be successful for selling those probably I can say 10%, right? So that's why I said to you all, everyone at the beginning, if you don't have time, you, you don't have client, not serious client, maybe not a good idea to touch it. Waste a lot of time. Of course, if I have time, you, know, you want to learn something, that's another thing, story, right? So of course. And convenience store, again, I say, always small, but very simple, but very complicated. So you will see on the, when we do the offer, do the uh, negotiating process, you will see it's really compli complicated. A lot of things you have to need to think, think about it. Not like residential, you, you see the house, you got the price accepted, then you, the two conditions, you're done. But the, for sales and more business, there's a lot of work there. And we have some agents here in today, many in, this, uh, in the seminar here, you, they will know how much work they <laughs> spend, how, what, what the hassles and uh, at, the, at the end. So that's the thing that we, I hope everyone today, if you attend this section, you will know at least basically what you can do, right? So you can learn something from them. Uh, you not only sell this convenience store, but later on, if you know the process, if you know how to do it, you can sell a coffee shop, restaurant, bar, whatever, and later on. So that's the same thing, same process, same approach, some, some condition. So probably you can learn from here. Uh, if anyone have a question, you know, during the section, you can ask me, you know, pop in, you can let me know, I can answer right away because that's, that's really, I, I need to, you know, everyone to be, you know, uh, whatever question you can bring, bring up. So that's like a workshop. We cannot just say lecture, it's not a lecture, it's a workshop, you can work together, okay? Basically, I'm talking about today is as a buy agent, mostly because listen agent, we talk about it a little few uh, in last section, uh, we are talking about if you're a buy agent, of course, something related to listen agent, the same thing, the same process you can remember. So if you're a buy agent, everyone, uh, someone ask you, David, I want to buy a convenience store. So in that, when you hear something, the same thing like you're selling residential, you, when you qualify process, it's the same as selling residential. When I ask you, David, I want to buy a convenience store, you have to know what background of the, the buyer, what he want to do, why he want to, uh, what he, uh, previous, what he, he did for his, for, for living. Uh, something maybe new immigrant, some, someone maybe just lost their job, or maybe someone that uh, they have relocation, those kinds of things you have to know that the buyer's background. Second, you have to make sure what the buyer's expectation. You say, I want to make money 50,000 a year, I want to make money 100,000 a year. I remember that a few years ago, people asked me, David, I want to get the business. 
I, I asked, what, what are your expectations? They said, I need at least make 200,000 a year. So in that way, you have to ask, what's your background? What's your history? I said to them, if I can make, I get you something, make 100,000, 200,000, but you have to know you can do it or not. That's a very important, right? So basic one for convenience store, yes. Everyone can do, can run a convenience store. Uh, I remember that uh, when I saw dry cleaning store at the Young and Eglinton 20 years ago, that uh, a cup uh, of Korean uh, people, the owner were Koreans, they did not speak English, not too much, a few few words. They can remember the name of the people, the customer name, but they could not hardly to, you know, to communicate, but this, they're doing a good in business because they have experience in running that. So those kind of things you have in know your, your, the background of the client. So that's their expectation or they have whatever they have to be practical, reliable, right? So if they say something like that, 200,000 as a income you want to make, at least you have asked, what is your budget? Do you have anything already in mind? So you have how much money you have you know, for, for the payment because for small business, normally bank is hard to get the mortgage. It's hard to get financing. Unless some newly set up business having, you know, running operation, they have all, uh, what you can say, this, the assets, the great asset and equipment, those kind of things. Bank, if they want to get you, give you a market, they're based on the value of asset for those kind of business. So it's not easy to get financing. Uh, that's why in the offer of convenience for convenience a, a store for sale, it's harder to put the financing condition because normally you can hardly get financing. So those things we have to remember, right? So if you knew the budget of the client, the offer indeed the price, you will see what based on their, you know, the, the expectation, based on the, the, the budget, then you have to see what price range you can look for them. The same thing like you press search your house for your client. If the client has the pre-approval uh, marked from the bank, they say you can up to a million dollars. So you can just go by the budget. Those kind of things you have to look at the price range. So right, the same thing. Of course, the important is again, always like residential location because the people doing convenience store, most of them, you have to make sure where are they located now? So you have to look for something around the area. Unless that people is ready to relocation. Let's say that there is their renting property, so they look, want to find something, then you can relocate with the store together. In that case, you can search those kind of things with the prop, uh, the convenience store uh, as around the area they, they want to move to. That's important to see. Location, always the same thing, okay? After everything you've set up with the, your client, uh, you see that the client budget, you see the client uh, expectation, you, need, you know the, how much you can afford it to buy, then you, the second thing you have to make sure that the client should sign a BIA with you. The same thing like residential. The reason is commercial for sign BIA is it should be better signed before you start working with the client. The reason is because a lot of people asking, David, I want to buy a communion, so I want to buy a restaurant. But you will search on the market, right? Search on Amazon. You send everything to, to the client. If some client, they're honest, yes, yeah, sure, they can say, oh, David, I want to see this, I want to see that. Some of, we, we do not expect everyone is honest with you, right? Some customer or client, you send them whatever info they have this, sometimes the people will go themselves to see the, you know, that uh, store owner themselves without listening, without buying either. So those kinds of things we have to try our best to avoid it. So if you just sign a PIA, that means I representing you whatever information I give you, then you should follow that you know, the contract. In that way, you will be safer, right? Uh, I heard about, a lot of agents say, oh, I send this a restaurant which is in downtown, then the client went themselves and the, the sailor talked to the you know, buyer directly without even the listening agent involved. 
finally they make the deal them, them, themselves. It happened from time to time. So for us, because as I say, our agent, we are working on commission base. If you lose that, uh, the client, so if you lose whatever, you, you have no, no contract with the client, you lose your the commission. So those kind of things, you, we need to suggest you again, sign a BIA. If they don't want to sign a BIA, you say, you need to ask them to sign a contract that we call the confidentiality agreement. And also we call it the non-disclosure agreement. So those document protect yourself. Uh, last section I, I said to everyone in, uh, in the last section, uh, one agency was asked to go somewhere to see a farmland two and a half hours away. Then he did not knew the, the client, he did not uh, see the client before. So the client, oh, I want to go to see him or whatever. So in that case, if you don't say anything, if you, you take the, the client to the side, later on, they, they knew that what, whatever address already, the location that they even say, they can do themselves, right? So to protect yourself, you need to sign that confidential agreement, even if they don't want to sign the PIA. Those are the kind of things we need to do, right? Then after you sign PIA, you sign a uh, non-disclosure agreement. So of course you start your searching, uh, you know, the store, what according to the location, according to the range, whatever you search online, Matthew, that I will show you just later on after this. So you search whatever the information, get it, then you pass the information to your client. And then, then of course you have to screen out whatever the information is, is good, is, uh, it's just the right for the needs of your client to send to them. After that, you have to narrow down the list. Sometimes you send maybe 10, 20, even 30 lists eh, to your client. Then you have to, based on the information, you have narrowed down whichever seller, whatever is good for, for your client, then do the analysis based on the information given. In that way, after you say, oh, the, maybe they say, oh, David, this one looks good, that one make good money, that one a good, great location. In that, when you feel something like that, then you can make physical showing or visit. So physical showing, the same thing like residential, you need to take, uh, you know, call a listing agent, book a showing, whatever. So I suggest if you book showing for visit, again, like residential, you need to accompany yourself as a client to go in there. You don't let your client go in themselves. Even you have signed a BIA, you still better bring the client yourself because by legal uh, regulation, no one can show the property or the, the store without a licensed agent accompany. So don't do that. Sometimes I heard about from some other agents, oh, get the client, let them to see first, then if they see it, then go, go to uh, bring it to see it again. It's not a good way, okay? It's not, it's, uh, it's a violation of the rule. Tell your client, don't go themselves. That's why a listener always said in the remark, don't go direct, the support always say so. So don't do that. If you send uh, your client like this, if the seller found it, if the listener found it, they, you were the one to be penalized. So don't do that, okay? Let's say that you already, uh, Get ready. You show the product, the store. You've got everything ready. Or think, oh, this is a store good for my client. The client has uh, green, like it, based on all the information that uh, is ready to go ahead. And then in that way, you have to start to prepare an offer. So before you prepare an offer, you have to. I always said, uh, even not only you know for selling business, selling everything as an agent. Uh, in all training, Tony also taught every, everyone before. We are not selling any product. We are only selling our self service. So you are the agent, you are, you are providing service, you're not selling any product. Mm -hmm. So communication is always a key between you and the agent, you and your client, you and the agent. So your communication is among everything. So that's why I said, John, even the bidding one now, as I said, you need to handle the pro properly your professional communication method and uh, manner. Always communicate, 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 right? So contact listing agent, whatever information not read in the listing, 
then you have to call the listing agent. I'm ready to get go ahead for an offer. I need you get something ready for me. Let's say list of title, whatever list of title you have. You have anything copy lease ready or the lease, how long the lease is to go, one and a half year or still four years, whatever, any option to renew, or I'm ready to negotiate a new lease. So always ask for those things first before you pre prepare offer. You, otherwise, you prepare offers for nothing because let's say you, you want to assume the existing lease, it's only six months to go. How can you assume the lease? No way. You need a new lease, right? So those kind of things you have asked, the more detail, the more better for, for you. So next one is franchise, of course. Some convenience store, you can see on the, some corner street, some major intersection, they will see all franchise uh, convenience as well. So bakers or something like that, I, I heard, I saw the many of them. So you make sure if they're franchise, ask for franchise agreement. Financial stem, of course, mostly for selling business. We always ask financial statement. The problem is for convenience though, they, because they self-employed like our agent, they don't have financial statements. If the, in that case, you can ask the, the seller for the T1 return, they call this a business activity income statement. So in that way, you can get, you know, uh, T1 to, to show that the home competition making, what's the sales that they are doing, or you can ask for HS report records. Those are kinds of things also you need to ask a seller. But again, as I, I said, because it's not a corporation, some restaurant, some bar, some you know, supermarket that under corporation, that's a make it easier because the eight, normally accountant may make finance statement every year, right? So in that way, you can copy it. But for convenience store, it's hard to get it. no financial statement. Only or one copy you can ask for notice of assessment from CIA. Those are the kind of things you can ask. Uh, in many cases, some say that they don't want to disclose. But uh, if the offer accepted, they have to provide something for the client to verify. So that's the thing you as a uh, list, list agent prepared, buy agent you can ask. For convenience, convenience store, that, major, major sales record you need is a lottery. So called 649, you know, a lot we people are playing like a lot, right? 649, Max, uh, super, used to be Super Salmon as well. So the people buying convenience store is totally depend on the lottery machine, what we call 649 terminal. Any convenience store, if the result is the terminal machine, is, is useless. That means, they make money, make some commission based on the lottery. That's an important income for the convenience store. I will show you uh, the one case later on from, from this. So as a sales agent, you have asked say to get ready because as a uh, six night terminal corporation, they have every month or uh, even every weekly, they give you some summary. So you can ask for those summary, then as that is the kind of proof of the commission they're making. Then the final thing is, as a listing agent, before you even do the listing, you ask the seller what's the maximum approximate value of the inventory. Because when you buy a convenience store, you not only buy that, uh, you know, a goodwill, you have to buy also the inventory, the stocks, everything in the store. You cannot say, I don't want this, I don't want that. No. Convenience store, a lot of convenience store is stays there for 20, 30, even 40 years there. So a lot of stuff. Is carrying on for many many years ago. As a buyer, a, as a buyer, you cannot say I don't want this, I don't want that. As long as the the product in the store is in good shape, is no uh, not past that line, no expiring day, you have to take it. So that, no matter what, the only thing is you have to make sure how much the inventory at the cost. Because when you buy a convenience store, later on you have not only as you say. The convenience to ask a hundred thousand, maybe the stock will be another fifty thousand. You have to pay a hundred fifty thousand on in total. So make sure the buyer understood you buying this plus the max uh, the inventory. So those kinds of things, as a buyer agent, you can ask. But as a listing agent, you have to prepare that before you list the business for sale. Okay. 
uh, when you are doing that uh, as by agent, there are a lot of things you have to consider, right? The many people offer. At the beginning, I said you are ready to prepare offer. You need to base on whatever thing you have to think about in uh, in your mind before you draft the offer. So at this point, let's see how can we research, find some listening for it. Then from there, I, we can work together to see what, uh, how can we do evaluated store, what process we can do. Let's see that as matrix, okay? The same thing like we do that, uh, do search for uh, residential listing. Let's see the matrix, okay. Okay, uh, let's get start from here. I'm already in the screen and the metric. Can you see everyone? Can you see right? The same like the session. When in a metric system, you go to your commercial, when you search in commercial. So the different that the, uh, the things, there's a few more things you need to pick up. When you see this here, so active is you listening. You make sure that the area first, I normally do the area that's in Toronto. Right, so because I my client one they're looking for community in Toronto, so you have to set it in Toronto. I leave the open in, in Toronto, but I want to see what kind of thing they want to buy. Type if we can on the left side, that will be sale of the business. Look at here, sale of a business. I need to search it, and because the, the sale of business they have different thing, the category. We look, look at here category. So you look for category, open the window. What kind of thing you want to do without the property? You know, convenience store, most, in most cases, they don't sell with the property. If selling with the property, the convenience store, we sell more, it's the value. So you will see here, we be okay. Without the property. Then from here, you have to see what use. That's why a few more things you have to, you have to check it. So when you, by convenience, and you knew that your client is want to buy business as convenience store. So from here, menu here, we go to find the convenience store. Look, look at here, convenience store. Look here. So that's convenience store, okay? A variety of the core convenience store. So when you find something there, now you can open up in Toronto area. So for how many listings? 17 listings here. Look at here. So we go by okay. We got seven, 17 listing here. Those are convenience for sale now from 29,000 up to how much? 374,000. I pick up few few for let's say uh, we start. Let's start on this one. So this is the convenience store. They have address there on the avenue road, what is asking for 198,000. Look, look at here the price. And this convenience store, we most as agent, you have to make sure, look at what you can need to know first. You need to know the remarks because based on your client's uh, requirement, as I say, how much they want to ask uh, the pay, how much they want, the expectation they want to make money, then you can look at those kind of things first. So those kind of uh, listing, we, we're searching this is one of them. Let's see in the next one. Because I put the example later on, I will share with you that what information we need from them. So this is another one, ask for 229,000. And you, beside the project, check uh, whatever they are the description in the remark. Make sure that those kinds of things your, your client is what they're looking for. That's the ones. So the next one is, it's another, it's another community store. They ask for 289,000, 289,000. And look at again, oh, sorry. 
the two small metric, I, I, I sometimes feel that the two small in the C. So whatever they say here, yeah, that's uh, some kind of information you can you can get. If you, you still need more, normally you have to ask for the listening, whatever they can give you. I just want to share with you what how do you search, and then how do you read the information? Let's say this one, uh, Wilson's Avenue. They're asking for 349,000. Okay. Uh, again, that, that convinced to look, stay for the market for for a long, long forever. If they don't sell it, look at this one, 169 days already. So selling small business, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, is long, it takes forever. And sometimes if you, one year cannot sell unless they make good money, the price is good, and also that the, the location is good. Those are the kind of things we have to remember. So this one has 349, and the sales, if it, uh, they tell you here, look at this one, net, net profit, net income, they say 240,000. So those kind of things, they make money. Uh, that's the thing, maybe your client say expectation, they're all oh, 200,000 net profit, that looks good, right? So you have to see all the other details later on to see whether it's worth it or not. And for those coming in, so, uh, another thing I, met, I need to share with you is the commission. Look here, this commission 4%. That means whatever sale price, if we 4%. Uh, as a listing agent, if you do a listing for such convenience store, normally they will be charged full commission 10% for the everything over 100,000, let's say, for sale. If something that sells at 40,000, if we saw that one listing 20,000, how much you can get commission? If you can 10%, 2,000 only, just like a rental uh, property. So in that case, if it's smaller you know, uh, sales price, I suggest you can make flat fee. Let's say 20,000 convenience store, you can ask for, let's say 5,000, flat fee, no matter how much you sell sell for, but the commission will be 5,000, let's say. Then you share with the buyer agent, half and half, 2,500 each. So that's the way, because otherwise, if you can 5% commission a buyer agent, it's hard to get the buyer agent to cooperate with you. No one, so everyone working you know, so hard to get the small money, this might not be a good idea for, you know, uh, for, for the agent to work on. So in that case, I say just listen agent, when you do a listing, get the flat fee, will be much easier to in, make incentive to buy agent to work with you, that's important, right? So the, the other one is the show a guest station convenience store, and they ask more 374,000 here, they look, look at that, right? And of course they have to make money, they have to tell you what profit they're making. Some of agent, they never say anything here. So if you find something, you have to call. But the only thing that he said, gross sales, 900,000. So those kind of info we, we need to know when you search the listing. Based on this, so everybody knew when you do research, uh, do your search, you know the way that the way you can go. So where you can find what, what price you're looking for. You can set up the price range, whatever you need to as well. The same thing like a residential. Now you, you knew that the few listening for sale now, we're going back to, uh, to do our offer, okay? Let's see. We're going back to, okay. So we're going back to ready to get the offer now. Uh, let's say we pick up one uh, offer. I we we saw just now. Now in that now the office we get it ready now. First off, the price. Price. What we can determine the price. Uh, we have to do the calculation after this. The price always based on the return. That's something like investment. The same thing like investment. The price normally we say convenience store from one year to one and a half year is a good buy. That means if you make uh, 
50,000, you, you normally we can 50,000 uh, buying price will be good for, for the buyer. Depend on the location, of course. We always say one and one half year, according to the market. We see uh, whatever is we see uh, the listing we bring from there. Secondly, we go by the hours of working. Convenience store always working longer hour, almost 10 hours, 12 hours a day. So that's why some office building in downtown, convenience store only five days working. So in that case, this, this could the same price ask, same price asking, people will take five days working, right? So that's the thing you need to consider as a buyer agent. Next one is the lottery. Lottery is six for another commission. If the lottery commission can cover the rent, basically, so that convenience store looks like good for, for buyer. So those are things you need to consider as well. And the next one, closing day, always convenience store. Closing day will be depend on uh, the lease. Depend on the how long you take for for check that as a sale of the business. Those things you have need to consider. Um, normally two months, sometimes three months. So you have to think, talk to the listing agent when you get off and say how long we want to get it close. Uh, it takes sometimes take forever, right? Because some downtown management office building they, that uh, the landlord is property management. They take up even longer to approve, to process. That's the thing you need to know. Irrevocable time um, in the office normally will be two to three days because not like residential 24 hours, 72 hours. We need three days or four days. The longest better because you need time to negotiate, right? And deposit, you need it to go five to 10%. Normally, if 10% commission, you better you hire, deposit will be better, right? And terms and other conditions you need in the offer, we talk about after this. Inventory, uh, we said before, inventory is always uh, as a buyer, because we, sometimes the buyer say, oh, we, ha we have the minimum, we don't have much money, I need maximum, let's say 30,000 inventory, you have to mention in the offer. Sometimes if it goes to 30, maybe 40, then the buyer say, oh, I don't have this much money. What in that case, you need to ask for that the, let the owner for VDB this way. Other thing you have asked this ancient in offer. What I'll other take fees? A let add a hitting fee, uh, uh, land yard fee, we'll the franchise that. fee, and others, you know, so some providers we'll say, like we'll and, uh, some other things you need as well. And the lottery. Uh, 649. Someone in the, in the background now. So lottery commission normally need apply for you know the transfer to the new owner. The new owner has to apply for the 649 terminal application. You need to make deposit there. So those things need to take time. Uh, in a closing day, when you put the closing day, make sure before closing the buyer has to you know you get that uh, apply for that. Otherwise, you lose business, right? For those things, you need to apply your offer. Hello, someone put there. Yeah. Is... Right here. This is not right. Hi, is, it Peter? is it Peter there? Yeah. The mic. Yeah. I have a lot of minutes. How many you need? Hello, is, is Peter? Is it, Peter, is that you? Hello. Someone, someone in the background. Okay, I muted. Okay. Uh, those kind of things we in the office we have to make sure that everyone should uh, remember what you need to put, what you need to consider in the office. I do the case now, a few cases we share now, uh, share with you before we make the real offer here. Okay, that case one, just on the listing, uh, asking price is 98,888. Uh, from this case, what I can share with you is, because they make every uh, every sales, weekly sale, 98 to 90, 9,500. They sell 9,500 9, per week. 
So this is a case we are, we're going to talk about again later. So a lot of commission is 5,000 to five uh, to 1,500 per month. So when you look at that, you will see what the sales will be weekly, monthly, or annually. So from based on this, they will tell you the net, net income, how much they say. Uh, this one does not say that how much net income they're making. Uh, so you remember that the, based on the return, as I said, one and one half year, that's the price if they make net income tell you here, you can immediately you see, oh, if they're asking too much or not. That's the case one I can uh, share with you here. Case number two, let's see this one, that uh, the business had been 24, five years, that means the owner had been there long enough. And they asking 99,000. Here you use, everyone just see here, yearly profit 50,000, let's say estimate. So in the remark, they always say something like, that's the way you need to determine the price that the relationship between the price, right? And 50,000, then you will see 99 asking. In this way, you can smell something. The price looks like a little too much high, right? That's why this listing has been there for 165 days or something like that. That's the one, uh, again, uh, at the example. Case number three, let's see this one. Uh, this one I will bring down to the worksheet later on we, we, we share together. So this, the sales, weekly sales, according to listing, 89,000. Secret portion, 35%. Here I can share with uh, everyone again. Secret sales, that means the lower secret portion that business is better than for the owner. The reason is secret sales, the profit portion very, very low from 10% to 15%. So uh, I gave, in the last section, I gave the example. One of my clients that have come in and store is selling 80 to 90% is secrets. So there's a lot of volume, a lot of activities, but the percentage of profit is low. So in that way, you're working for too much work, work for nothing. So that's why I say, lower secret sales portion, the lower the better, the higher will be much more work, but much less profit. So based on this one, 35% is a good store. Uh, if everyone uh, less than 50% sale portion will be good, good store. Some store, as I said, 60%, 70%, that's, that's too much secret. So the profit may not be good enough. The rent here so far, you look, look at here, low rent, 1,500, right? And lottery commission is 2,000 to 22 per month. They have ATM income, seven to 800. So this store looks to me is a good store. That means because the secret portion is low and the, the commission is, lottery commission, 2,000 plus ATM, 2,700. It already cover up the rental payment. So that's a way you can determine the store is good or not. If this, the higher rent, low to commission low. So in that way, if not matching that, uh, you know, the profit, that store will be, you know, the harder sell. This one, I can, that's why I use this example later on as example to how to work on it. This is the case three. Case number four. This one, uh, again, asking for 198,000. Annual sale, you see that the annual sale is there. And also that the net profit is say approximately 114,000 a year. So based on this, the asking price 198, of course on high side, it's still, as I said, one and to one and a half year. So if you look at by one and a half year, so you will see how much we can bargain with this, uh, uh, the owner. So this is one of them we can talk about it, even uh, everyone can have a calculation of this. Case number five, let me see. Number five will be another way, the asking 349, we saw the listing just now, the annual net profit, 240, 249,000. So the sales, look at the sales, looks like so great, 1.5 million, right? And um, per year, but they get the profit 240,000. 
So this way, again, if you get 240,000 a year, uh, asking price like uh, 349, uh, still so far on high side. The, the thing is, if you know that way, you know the calculation, you can bargain, you can get a good deal later on with it, uh, the seller, right? So those few things I can share with everyone to see what they're asking, what's the profit they're making. So when you sell community so you know uh, the way you can deal, you can talk with them, negotiate with them. So let's, let's make a real calculation now. Let's, Based on the sales just now, remember the one, uh, this one. The sales at uh, eight to nine thousand a, a week, and secret portion. So we come back to the real calculation. This is the list as per listing K three. Let's say eight thousand a week. We have every year fifty two weeks, right? So by twelve months, divide by twelve months, we every month sales. Look at here, 34,000, 34,666. Because secret portion, as I said, mentioned just now, 35% secret portion, but the secret portion profit only do the average, I do the 13%. So you get the net profit for net sales for the secret portion only 1,500. But for the other, the rest will be called uh, variety. We call it variety. The secret sell others in the lake, uh, hardware, variety, those kind of things, 65%. Uh, that's it, of the total sale. Their net profit will be normally we can go by 25 to 30%. They call the markup 30% or 35 But we normally, we can say as common practice, 25% is the minimum. So their profit will be making 5,600 per month for net sales. Uh, that's before tax, or that, I make sure, right? Then lot of commission, 2,000, and ATM, 700. So in that way, every month, this store owner, they get net sales, 9,900. So this is the one we can see the net sales now. Let's go back to what other expenses. So if it, this is not net profit, this is not net sale, okay? So that the expenses is according to the listing. I just based on a quote, other things, we assume everything like this, okay? The rent, they had mentioned already, a license fee, normally the government, utility, according to the store, I can make a 500. Insurance, they have store insurance, everything, all together the expensive for the store, let's say 3,100. 3,130, that's the cost for the store owner to run the business every month. So based on this, then we've got net sale, we've got the profit uh, cost, now we're going to calculate the value. So the net, as I said, net sale 9,900 before, according to the previous slide, the expense is 3,100, so net income so far per month, according to this maybe 6,700. So if it, they're making 6,700 per month, every year we're making 81,000. So that's a net income for the store owner based on the information we are given. But the sales according to the listing, they say average like this, but I, I normally I would say because the seasonal adjustment we needed because winter time, summer time, spring time will be different sales. So practically we say 8% normally for an up and down. Some people say 5%, I can use 8%, you can use 10%. So based on this, this store we make in 74,000 a year. Let's say around 70,000. So 70,000 a year for the net income. That net income is owner's salary. Please remember, because the convenience store always, they don't share, they don't hire anyone, no helper. Maybe occasionally they make some helper or family member or whatever. So this money is belong to the store owner. You be shared husband and wife or with kids, whatever. So those are income we call net income. If you hire someone, you hire someone, you have to pay salary and you have to deduct a salary from there. So in that way, you will make less money. You can, when you sell it, you sell less, uh, less money as well. 
So those kind of things we are uh, uh, so far I gave us gave you the example for how do you calculate net income? Oh, someone. So based on this one, if you're uh, you're a listing agent, what you say just apply. If you're a buy agent, what price you can start your asking? Those are the things it's my leap for you. So they didn't know right, no wrong. Depend on location, as I say, depend on the hours of operation, depend on the motivation, depend on that, uh, you know, other, other issues. So you can say just whatever price from, you know, one year, from one and a half year, some of them maybe closer to two years. So again, I leave you, you can make your suggestion based on the calculation here. So that's the thing to do the workout for how you do evaluate the business. And next one I will share with you now is the document required. So if you are the buy agent, those are the kind of form you need it, right? Sell the commercial fiber to schedule A already also there and sell a business app, a feeder a feeder with 503, you, sometimes you need some, depend on the lawyer, some way they don't need it. Of course, you need a uh, commission to 320 and you need a BIA to sign as well. So uh, those things you as a buy agent, you need to remember. Uh, everything should be in our website. Uh, off the website, if you visit off the website, you will see all the form already there, okay? And um, so I don't need to go through every form in detail. I will share with you uh what we can do in the offer so i list this few things as well in uh, as a listing agent uh to get ready before you know the buyer agent to prepare the offer those kind of things we need to remember it and um, i don't need to go one by one now and later on as i say you you can see whatever in the offer they are already listed out. and when you prepare offer uh, the work form Again, it's already, uh, we create a template or the, the schedule A in the uh, uh, website. When you click to the web form, every, most of the uh, thing already pop up for you. You can use it yourself. You can feel free to modify it. And so in case you, because those standards, everybody asks, oh, David, is the standard uh, clause, what? Yes, mostly they are not the standard, we can say the sample for you. So different store, different uh, buyer, different sellers, you can ask different things. You need to modify yourself accordingly, right? So those are condition, again, we put in the offer. I, I, I pop up the offer for, for us to use. The important for convenience store, if you have an offer uh, to prepare, mostly the first condition is always verify the sales of business. So that's why it's convenient store. If you uh, verify the sales, how do you verify it? How long you take? Normally you, you have to discuss with the, the, the seller. We suggest seven days normally or 10 days maximum. But some people say, oh, condition upon observe business for 20 days, sometimes even ask for one month. No, that's not reasonable. So something like seven days to 10 days for condition because you need to check the sale whether it's good or not. People always asking, according to listing, let's say, they say that weekly sale 8,000 to 9,000. So the, the buyer need to stay in the store, verify to say whether they are, according to the listing, whether the same amount or not. Of course, the difference will be every day, but then it's not too much major difference. If too much difference, let's say, ask, they say weekly 8,000, if you sell only 6,000, or even at 7,000 is, is a 1,000 different from per week. So that's not good for the buyer. The buyer can have a right to say, oh, it's not right. I can back up from deal. So those kind of things you need as a buyer to verify the this, this sales. That's a major condition you need. So if they're not matching it, the buyer has a right to back up from the deal. Right? And of course, that the sale up within five days, they have provide all the things to the, to the buyer as a, again, as say the existing lease, the final statement and the list of chattels and all other 
franchise agreement, whatever things include in this, you know, for the bias uh, or bias lawyer to review later on. So you need ask for those kind of documentation as an offer. So the, the buyer, when they receive the document, they have, let's say, five days or 10 days uh, as a condition to review and approve by their lawyer. So if the lawyer approve it or accountant approve it, then of course you give the waiver. If not, they are satisfied with that, then the buyer always just, you can back up from a deal. So that's why I say that a lot of condition will be for the buyer for buying some business, not only convenience store, like restaurant bar, all the same, they put a lot of condition there. So until every condition move, then the offer is from the other that, than that, you will stay forever, right? So those are the kind of condition we need to, to see for, for that. Um, this condition by lawyer review, as again, I say, with the five days, 10 days, whatever you can put there. And so some, sometimes you say, oh, it's, uh, some seller ask them, is 10 days too long? Of course, you can negotiate five days, depend on you know, how soon, uh, how, how far away you're closing for, for, for the transaction. Right? And this is a condition example I already put here for, for everyone you can use. Actually, this, they are already in a web form. Uh, I just show you here as a slide here. The only thing here I can remind you here for that in the offer, make sure that this is yellow, I remind everyone. Anything regarding the lease or franchise agreement, if anything, any fees related to those arranged uh, negotiate new lease, uh, franchise agreement, there are a lot of, very often, the sale uh, landlord of franchisor, maybe charge thing, legal fee, whatever fee. So make sure in your offer, if you are representing the buyer, you have mentioned all the fees related should be whatever paid by the seller or share equally between the seller and buyer. You make sure you write something there. Otherwise on closing day, if you don't mention anything, if the landlord asks for some legal fee, if the franchisor asks for some uh, transfer fee, then who can they pay? Then nobody pay, the, the deal will be done. So that's the thing you need to think of before you uh, uh, prepare the offer. So as a listing agent, you have to find out first. As a buyer agent, you have to remind the listing agent what fee will be, so who will be responsible. So discuss about it, okay? Uh, so those are things uh, as a condition, as a, uh, again, as I say in the work form, few things and you need to remember that uh, uh, I remind you as listening or buy agent, always be careful. A uh, convenience store is just like certain other business as well. Uh, sales owner, the seller, the owner of the store should give the seller, uh, give the listening agent or give the buyer whatever information should be accurate. You cannot say, uh, that, let's say the sales is 8,000, even you say only 6,000, 7,000, you say 8,000, that's not right, that's not accurate. Uh, you need something to prove or you need something to verify. Uh, otherwise, the buyer can back up from the as is again, I say that, but if you don't say something uh, that correctly, so this wastes a lot of people's time. So everybody wastes time. So make sure say that the information is correct. Okay, always should be uh, verifiable. People can you know can be get approved as as well. Uh, sometimes the seller always they don't want to disclose their number. Uh, this did not much disclose to the to the buyer either. I always as a listener I, I always said to the seller, if you don't tell me, if you don't tell the client how much you're making approximately. Uh, the buyer, the new owner, when they take over, they cannot re report the, the, you know, the similar number in a consistent way to CIA. If CIA found something, previous owner make this money, the new owner make less money, they, of course, if too much different will be the new owner's problem. If the new owner make much more money than previous owner, the CIA will, of course, they suspect you. How come the previous owner did not do that good job? And in, you know, that's something I ask the seller, you need to tell this buyer to make this consistent in their future, in their test return, whatever. It's not something, you know, uh, 
any any buyer whenever they, they take over, they need to know how can it and uh, continue to do the same job like this. So some seller they did not know what's the important as a listening or a buy agent. You have to convince a seller that the information should be correct, should be you know uh, consistent. Okay. Also that the when you do the uh, business observation, I said just now, the buyer will have the right to stay in the store for observe business for seven days, 10 days. So they need mutual agreement between the sale and buyer, how to arrange for check the sales. Some convenience store, it's easy. Some restaurant, they don't let the people stay in the buyer cash register, but in convenience store, it's much easier. So convenience store cash register, someone the buyer can sit beside them, the, the owner, the seller. So they see whatever sales they can record, they can make a note it on. So, but for a restaurant, for a bar, and a certain coffee shop, they, sometimes they, the seller does not let the buyer to sit in there. So the buyer, when you check the sale, they have to sit in a corner somewhere, make them know themselves. So that's the kind of thing, uh, check the sale. That's why I said, you need get both sides agree how to uh, make the uh, buyer to observe the business. Other, other than that, it's hard to you know, verify. So if you cannot verify the sales, how can you buy the business, right? So that's a very important. Some seller, they don't, they, they don't want anyone in the store, but the, I said, something I will tell the seller, if you don't do that, the buyer will not buy your business, right? So that's the thing that we need to get the mutual agreement. And when you do, uh, check the sales, uh, observe the business. At the same time, the buyer is searcher, always search the buyer. You do the inventory to check in yourself. Look at the shelf, whatever stock, the inventory on the shelf, you see anything out of date, anything already spoiled, so you need to know before you uh, do an accounting. Don't leave until the last minute. Let's say tomorrow closing, today going to inventory accounting, at that day, you see, oh, this is not good. That is out of date. That why it's spoiled already. You have to better prepare before that, right? And of course, uh, when you come in the store, when you do your closing a deal, mostly inventory accounting, don't do yourself. Don't do the sale and buy yourself. Hire an inventory accounting firm. They can do a professional job. They do sometimes, like store, three hours, four hours will be done. If for yourself, the sailor and buyer, it takes forever. One day, even one and a half days so to finish it. It's really, it's a lot of work. So it's not it's not worth it to do something like that. Also that the accounting inventory, always a lot of argument. They say, I don't want this, I don't want that, this one is not good. So that we create a lot of uh, argument in inventory accounting. So I suggest, Listen agent, buy agent in accounting, in accounting inventory that day, normally the day before closing should be at the store. Then in that way, both agents can coordinate with the buyer and seller to make sure everything goes smoothly, right? Again, the most, most important yeah, as a buyer agent, you tell your buyer, you need to get a good relationship with that seller. Of course, the seller need to also one of the most closing need a good relation with the buyer as well. From the buyer side, if you have good relation with the seller, the seller will teach you, will show you, will you know, tell you all the good way how to deal with business, how to do the running store, how to you know get where to get a good product, get a good whatever uh, uh, things for for you. So if you don't have good relationship, the seller will not train you properly. So that's. An, it's a loss to, uh, to the buyer. So I always say to the buyer, be good, be nice to the seller as well. Of course, a reasonable, not, right? not something like uh, and, uh, some without other reason. So that's important, something I have to tell everyone. And uh, you, if the listen agent, you, what you can do, and the buyer agent, you, what you can you know, suggest to the client as well. So those are things that tip for, for everyone to buy in a convenience store if you're a buying agent. So let's go to the, the offer. If you have a minute, I can uh, 
get back to the listing, you see the office already there. I just show you, I don't want to you know, go through everything. And in that way, you will see uh, what uh, you know, after the, themselves. Then we, from there, I will take question uh, with you. Let's go back to the listing matrix. So, okay, let's go back to the listing now. Can you, everyone can see, right? Let's get to the listing just we talk about that one of the listing. Hey, yeah, the listing I was uh, on the case number three just now we mentioned about this this little one. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's the listing. Okay. Uh, let's say we are ready for this offer for this listing. That's easy way. This, let's say the same thing you do residential. This the web web form. Click the web form, right? Then offers we create automatically now. So I close that one first. Okay, here, uh, because we are only on the listing, you see everything here, we go to uh, semi already showed us before, go to direct, go to the forms. Then the form, you see, you see every form already here for this transaction, okay? Now what's important for us is the offer itself. Let's go to offer 502, agreement operation sale. Okay, let's get the, the, you see the form already here, uh, and the sale, everything, whatever, and you just fill out whatever here, the price, deposit, whatever. Uh, one thing I need to uh, remind you here, for the yin, the, the purchase price here, don't put nothing, let's put the zero here. The reason is last, uh, that one agent called me about a week, two weeks ago, he put the offer in, he put the say here, uh, how much, 20,000 inventory. That means if you offer that this price for let's say 90,000 for the purchase price, then 90,000 will be including 20,000 inventory. So your seller, if you're a listing agent, you see this, right? You will lose money. That means the price, the price for the store only same this owner. So never, never say put this one here. It should be zero. No inventory including the purchase price. The same thing like we buy residential whatever property, uh, farmland, let's say HST in addition to or HST included. So those are the same they, as a listing agent, you have to make sure don't want to see anything like that. Otherwise, your seller lose money there, okay? So make sure if you're a buy agent, of course you want, <laughs> you want whatever you want to do. That that's your your choice. But uh, to be as a common sense, don't do that, right? Because the inventory according to listing, according to the offer, we already say it will be physically counted, right? So that's the offer. That's important. This this one. Secondly, it will be non-disclosure. Let me see in the page two. Uh, non disclosure, let me see where is. Okay, number five, item number five. If a convenience store owner, if it's one sell it, so the buyer will be asked, the seller, within what to say, this says 10 kilometer or five kilometer for how many years? That's three years, 36 months. So that means if you sign something like this, the convenience store owner within three years, within five kilometers range, you cannot set up your second, your other new business convenience store. Otherwise, that's a competition. So that's why that's important for some, some seller because some sellers say, I want to sell this one, I want to open up another store somewhere, but 
you need to make sure that range is created for you or not. So you cannot do anything within three months, three years, within this five kilometers of range. If it's, some people put the long, uh, even not, uh, wider, 10, 10 kilometers. You some people say 20 kilometers, depend on what kind of business, right? Convenience store always, maybe five to 10 will be, you know, some reason. Normally five will be more um, often. So I have one client that 20 years ago, that's a came, uh, Korean. He sell the business. I sell for him, let's say, we make five kilometers away. But uh, she finally found a store. He just to measure see what's the distance between the new store and his, uh, his original store. Make sure he not conflict <laughs> that, that store. So finally he asked me, David, can you do that? I say, if that range already beyond, yes, go ahead. She finally made it. He made the new store just a little bit more than five kilometers. So that, to make that. So if the sailor wanted to do something uh, later, I mean, after selling, make sure you have me. That this range should be reasonable to the client. Unless some people say, oh, I don't care. I don't want to do convince law anymore. You can even put a hundred kilometers down the message has done affect me. So that things you have to make sure as the list, uh, listing agent, okay? Those things, uh, it's standard one. I don't want to touch now. The only thing the schedule A, I share with you here, schedule A, as I said, we, our office created you know, all the class condition already here. So that's everything already in the, in the schedule A. Uh, the condition I mentioned in the slide also include here as well. Please, your, as a buy agent, you can have a time to go through one by one. Uh, again, as I said, you can change, modify whatever you need. I put all the conditions here already. So five or six or seven conditions already in, in, the, in the schedule. So you can do it, that is yourself. So make sure you understand our condition, you understand how you protect the buyer. But if you are listing agent, of course you do it different way, right? You have to make sure whatever reasonable to the listing agent, uh, to the seller, make sure the, the seller is protected as well. So that's the offer I just popped in for you for, and to see that, that means you are ready to go. If you get something, a uh, listing already done, uh, price already ready to go, then use this, uh, the work form just right away. Just by some modification. Okay, that's the offer I share you with. Now let's get, get back to uh, Helen said that one. Case three. Case three, okay. Thank you. Calculation, right? Case three. Ah, uh, not calculation. I just that. Like, oh, uh, case three. That, okay, that one. Case name. So that's the one they're asking just now. That offer we prepare. so that's a case number three. What they're asking, what the sales they're making, what's the profit? Uh, the profit is not cheating, not giving the profit. That's what I, based on my knowledge, I work out that the, how much they're making. Right? If they're everything. They're, it's according to what they said. So that's approximate the net income I'm working out here. So those are things for, you know, for everyone about the process, how about the pricing, evaluation, and about the offer, how do you prepare some tips I share with you here. And now it's open for everyone to, for question, to, you know, discussion, as I say, it's a workshop for everyone. Yeah, it's ready and you can, you can, you know, uh, ask now right away. Helen, is okay for you now, right? Uh, you now the is Schedule A, 502. Oh, Schedule A, 502? Uh. Okay, oh, can you still, you know? Can you see now? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, that's a case three. So that's a topic I'm talking about today. As again, as I say, sales can the same thing like restaurant, coffee shop. If you knew something, the process, uh, evaluation, something, the same process, you will know how to sell everything, right? So don't look at all this small money, small in the transaction, but you learn everything, even no matter what big uh, transaction, the same process, same evaluation. Uh, you know, the, the techniques as well. 
I'm open now for everyone and really if you wanted uh, questions, it's about the time now. Hi, David. Yeah. This is Michelle. Michelle. Uh, I have a few questions. <clears throat> uh, why the high secret sale is not a good deal? Is that because you have to pay the commission on the secret sale or or have to pay extra tax? <laughs> no, no. Okay, <laughs> Michelle. That means, okay. Secret high, higher percentage of uh, secret sale because the profit for secret is less, is low. Let's see how much profit. Thirteen percent. Look at here, right? If you oh. if the store you have, you know, so far thirty five percent. If you have fifty percent sale portion in uh, um, in the sales, you still get the less, not much money, right? Oh, okay. So lower a profit. So if the higher security portion, the lower uh, profit portion, that's, uh, that means you, as I said, the store is so 90% secret sale. The commit, the uh, net profit, you see how you can carry how much maybe, right? If your 90% is on other variety, so you've got 25%, even 30% net profit. So you compare with it. With it. The net income, right? I see, I see. And I have a second question. Mm. Uh, what would be the fair price for the inventory and how do you... Oh, okay, good, good question. The inventory, that's why I said hire accounting firm, inventory accounting firm. They have many accounting firm. Uh, few agents from other brokers uh, used to working for the accounting firm. I, they knew me, that's why we are very uh, like friends because they, at that time, I hired them for imminent accounting. So imminent accounting from the new, what percentage for profit? Let's say secret, as they say, 13%, maybe they say 12%, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what kind of secret they're selling, big ones, small ones, cigar, and so they still have to make it by category, right? And variety, like hardware, they have, let's say 30% uh, profit, uh, variety 25, like milk, they have like three, four percent, five percent, and some other stuff. They have different categories for the calculating the profit. Uh, I mean, the mark they call the markup margin. So that way, we can make it easier. And uh, mostly for the buyer, we say the price is coming from wholesale price at the cost, whatever at cost. In, uh, the, let's say you go to your Costco to buy something, they have invoice, right? So the buyer will based on the invoice to pay the seller the, the inventory. Would that possible to ask the seller to like maybe uh, make have a discount, like maybe 80%, <laughs> like something like that, 20% off, something like that? Oh, that's that another way. Yeah, if you don't hire an accounting company, you say, mm -hmm. oh, the, the email total is, let's say now 30,000 now, I can yeah. ask the seller, say, Give it twenty percent off, then I pay you that money. That's still you know, between that uh, discussion or mutual agreement. Yes, you can do so. Okay, okay. And the last question. Sorry about the questions. That's right. Can you talk a little bit about the convenience store with post office? Okay, post <laughs> of, some convenience to have the post office here. Yeah. Uh, the post office they have some specific regulation and rules. Uh, the store owner has to be trained. The store owner has to be not self-employed. I think it should be a corporate or something like you need to incorporate corporation, something doing that. And you need to be approved by the post office. And then they call the post office outlet. Yes. In that way, they make uh, convenience of ways post office will be make, we sell much bigger money than the uh, regular convenience store. Yes. So is it difficult to like a buyer convenience store with the post office outlet because as you say, you have to go through maybe another qualification, maybe take longer time to close. Longer uh, than yeah. you do. But uh, I'm sure that you're talking about it. One is this convenience store has no post office now. You need to apply to do that. If mm -hmm. for new owner, yes, you can depend on the size of the store, depend on your qualification you can go to apply from post office to get the outlet, yes. If for existing outlet already in the convenience store, 
you need to also to be a review approved by the post office. That they need a process there. So either way, you need to approve by you know by the head office. Yeah. Oh. Do you have any idea how long it takes for reviewing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know personally, I don't know how long. Normally, I mean commonly, commonly at use before a pandemic, I think four to six weeks. Yeah, you can get the full. Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. Four to six yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The same thing like liquor license, then you buy a restaurant, a bar, uh, the liquor license, it took about four to six weeks before pandemic. Nowadays, this, people say maybe two months, something like that. Oh, I see. I yeah. see. Okay, thank you, David. No problem, Michelle. Hi, David. Um, yeah. How can I search for a church for sale on the MLS? Okay, church for sale, again, you're doing a little bit of commercial. When you click the commercial, then you click commercial on the category will be like a institutional, some, something like that. Yeah, but it doesn't show on my screen. Can you show me one more time, please? Oh, sh might not be available. You won't see that uh, online there, right? Yeah. Okay, minute. Uh... Mm -hmm. you, you, you search on that the category or use that the press under mattress system yeah category category that Did you find it in the end? Or? No. Yeah, I, I have to check with you later, probably. Yeah. Uh, for church, first of all, not much in uh, for for sale um, because some people ask from time to time. Really, same thing like school, and uh, not too many on on MS here. Okay. Uh, probably when you do it, uh, I'm not sure the. They have that this year or not. Okay. I'll find out again for you later. Yeah. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Hey, David. Morning. Yeah. Morning. Yeah. I have a question. Based mm -hmm. on the that slide that you just showed, mm -hmm. and let's say, okay, so the convenience store, the monthly income is 9,000. Mm -hmm. What suggestion? Uh, how much you suggest the seller <laughs> to list the price? Okay, as I said, for convenience store, commonly, commonly, one year return. That means a one year net profit will be the good deal, uh, up to one and a half year. Okay, so one and a half year that means, let's say, get back to this slide. It's about uh, so far six hundred uh, months, right? Uh, so if you go by. 12 months, you can go by 15 months in the try average, then you will see how much will be reasonable at the time. And the few case, let me show you that. Case number, yeah, this case number five. Look at this one. Net income is 240,000, right? They're asking 349. How many months they get returned? You can, did you calculate it? About 19 months or 20 months. So that means that they're asking too much. Then if you go by one and a half year, then maybe 16, let's say, yeah, 16 months, 15, 16 months in that range, possibly will be reasonable. But this is only that rough, rough idea. The only thing, as again, I say, depend on the location, depend on the hours of operation. If this store operating only five days a week, yes, good, good deal. If it open seven days a week, they open from six to uh, six a.m. The sun store opens early in the morning, six something from eight, eight to ten, eight to eleven, whatever. Even ten hours, twelve hours, thirteen hours uh, running the store. That's another thing. So a lot of factors you need to think about it, right? Okay, so depend on one or one and a half year. So yeah. is that you make decision or the seller uh, have to make the decision. 
you if you are listing agent, you can win the sale in okay. a in a market. So the people looking at one year and one half year, right? In that range. As again, as I say, if you say, Oh, I have a good location, my sales steady for the last 20 years. Yes, I can ask whatever. I mean the higher side. If I just run the store for one month, one year, and two years, or maybe some people that only run a few months, they want to sell. That's another thing, right? So there's a lot of things you have to think about, can see that. Okay, thank you. Mm, welcome. Good morning, Daisy. Yeah, uh, uh, this is Alan. I want to know, I have a client search for a clinic, medical mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. Oh, medical use. Uh, in a uh, new market. So I don't know how to to search. Do you know? It's a, can I search a general office as a medical use or must uh, search for professional use? Uh, yeah. Firstly, you have to use. Of course, you have the office use. Then in the in the actual use, you have specified medical. Yes. So you have to say medical. But you want it's by the building or by the business. It's a different thing. You make sure you buy the building, of course, it's a commercial building, right? Office building. If you just say buy the bids only, again, goes through, just now I said that one, a uh, sale of business, right? Then from sale of business, with property or without property, then you can do that one, right? If just buy the office clinic for clinic news. Yeah, she buy the office only, right? This yeah. buy the property, not by the business. So that's yeah, it, yeah. going to commercial, then go by office, then, for office, only the use will be see, zoning by law will be medical. If you do oh, that. yeah. Not the general office. Yeah, and yes, from a general office, you can find out where the zoning can be used in medical. Oh, they, okay, I see. They normally, they don't sell specific for office for medical, they sell office space. Then you can make sure that the zoning is uh, medical or not. Right? Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Hi. Uh, and David, I have a question yeah. on that same example that you were showing, the Lalikir. Um, so when you when you are considering this break even, right? If there is if there is a mortgage involved with it, right? Are you still considering one point fifteen months or eighteen months there? On you say if I if with mortgage, you mean that that buy a buy the business or buy a building? You know, no, buying the business, but he has some loan on it, not the mortgage, but there's some loan on it, right? How do you, you know, what do you recommend in that scenario for the break even? Oh, when you, you, you mean that for the buyer or for him, sale sailor side? Uh, a buyer, on the buyer's <laughs> The buyer buy the business, they want to make a uh, borrow it's money. Some, yeah, yeah. The first of all, as I said at, at the beginning, it's not easy to get financing for buying business, right? Mm -hmm. Buying business that uh, the bank will be looking at assets only. They see mm -hmm. how much equipment value and based on that asset, they loan the money there, not for the goodwill section. Mm -hmm. Of course, that the, when you do, you have mortgage, when you pay interest or mortgage, whatever, that your net profit will be coming down, right? So. In, uh, in the market so far, uh, the one year, one half years, that uh, common, common sense a uh, common practice does not apply with now financing. <laughs> when you finance, you get less money, of course. But for for example, it was 70,000, right? 78,000 a year. Now, you, because you borrow money, maybe you get 50,000 only. So when you ask for the price, when you go to the price, you cannot say, I only get 50,000. <laughs> um, to calculate the, the, the price in you know in offer. Uh, you still need to go by the full net income you're making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. No problem, Peter. Any other people want to see anything that uh, could can again commercial sales are really not easy, it's hard, as I said all, all the time. And unless you really have you know have time, you have serious buyer, then you can you can go for it. Otherwise, too much work, too much you know complicated sometimes, right? 
of course, some big deal is another thing, like buying some franchise coffee shop, like in downtown office building, sometimes in, uh, they sell 500,000, 600,000. I sold one is million dollars for a business because it can make huge money. And again, business for franchise business, the, the price will be based not only one and a half month, one and one and a half year, we go by three years, four years, even sometimes five years. Uh, I said to everyone before, like Tim Horton, right? It's really popular and you cannot get, you cannot buy it uh, privately on, on MLS. You need always go through the, the head office. They have a long, long waiting list. Who I want to buy a Tim Horton shop, you have to wait until whatever, you know, <laughs> ready. It's a long list. In so those uh, Tim Horton or used to be, as I said, second cup, Timothy, you know, those kind of coffee shop, there's many of them, the corporate. Corporate store, they don't sell. Uh, they, even they sell, they don't only sell for the business for shares only. So they don't sell business uh, for you independently. So that's the difference. Yeah. Any other suggestion, anything that, uh, you know, that we can open, I mean, you can talk freely. Don't be shy. Chen Jinli, I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah,可能我前面刚刚没有听到,不知道您是不是已经讲过了,就是我在帮朋友问一些小生意的时候呢,就是有一些小生意的这个啊, 卖卖家就会说，那我有很多都是现金交易，那就是在报表上就看不出来。那么我们要采取什么方法去了解呢？我还是就是对这方面还是没有很多的了解。OK，你这个问的太好了，你好多人都没做过，没去买卖市场。现
the good relationship 要搞好关系很重要，真的。好，好，到了，谢谢，谢谢您。我觉得也是的，就是坐在那儿，就好好的看一下他的生意怎么做的，然后这个他的现金是怎么样进来的，就这样子，其实更好可以了解他的生意是到底是好和坏，他当的人这个人流量是怎么样。我觉得这是个很好的主意，谢谢您。呃，这为什么只有 verify， 我们就 check sales， 那个买家就蹲店，我们叫蹲店，就这样意思，对吧？有的 sales 以前我呃跟大家说过，他有的 sales 就是不愿意给人家去看。怎么办呢？有的买家为了蹲店，他在蹲店之就是查生意之前，他就把车停在外面，在那个 parking lot 老远的地方，他就看每天的数人数，他自己拿着笔的记，进去多少个人，进去多少人，出来是拿大概多多大东西，他以这样的考察他的人流，他 traffic， 他看着到底多少人，这是另一种做法。有的人很认真，就是这样的，就我查生意之前，下 o f f 之前，我就先看蹲店的那看。所、so, 以这种也是一种办法，就是。嗯，对对对，是您说的这些主意都挺好，谢谢。Hi David， 嗯，呃、uh, ，我是 Jasmine， 嗯，呃、uh, ，对，关于 Community Store 的，就是大家的问题基本上都给我解疑了。啊、uh, ，我现在有一个不是这个关于 Convenience Store 的，嗯、是关于这个 Warehouse 的租赁。<音>那他比如说 lease， 呃，价格是一万块一个月，然后还要加 TMI， 肯定还要再额外加税。那现在就是说，我的客人可能就想一万块钱全包。我我下 offer 的时候，我可以这样说，就是说一万块钱还包括这个税吗？现在是这样的，那那 offer 的 listing 上面它是怎么给你分的？如果你是全包的话，你就用 short form 就做了。short form 的话，我们就是 gross rent， 对吧？如果有 long， 让那个 long form 的话，就会用，它是 break down， 每每年多少，每月多少，每尺多少，它是 net rent， 你要再加 T M I， 对吧？所以这样，你像你这么说，可以这么做啊，你就跟对方说，我就 draft 那个 short form， 那 schedule 写清楚，啊、uh, ， total 那个 rental 就是 ten thousand， including T M I， including H S T， 你们写清楚了，如果他同意的话，那就可以做了，没关系的，这个东西没有说规定。行还是不行？没这规定。OK， 然后还有一个就是，嗯，呃，这个 Schedule A 的一些 condition， 我们公司还有一些特殊的标注或要求吗？还是我们直接就下载这种 standard 的？那个 Schedule 不 Schedule A 公司网站上就是我们 Web Form 那个是一样的，因为是我准备的放在那里面，所以它就所以里面的内容上的 Warehouse 以你需要在根据你刚才说的内容还需要改动。就哪些需要改动，你有去增加内容、减少内容，都要根据那个就做一下，就是。OK， 好的，谢谢。可以这么做的，你先整个仿照一下，需要的时候我给你看看，你什么，好吗？好的，谢谢，谢谢，非常感谢。嗯。David，、嗯嗯、你好。嗯。我是 Cynthia。嗯。我还我就是有一个问题，我我最近在带客户看这些物业的时候，他总是有一个 concern， 他就说之前他们租过的，呃，租完了之后。呃，就是屋顶，就是房顶漏水，就是就是管理工作一直都修不好。嗯嗯，然后我们现在看的这个物业呢，可因为它是空了有半年了，所以也不知道之前的人租的是什么情况，为什么走？嗯，可能也是因为疫情，可能就空那么长时间，所以我客户就一直就担心，呃，是不是暖？为什么搬走啊？是不是暖气、热气到时候空那个什么，给供应不足啊？或者是有什么售后那个服务不好呀？呃，就像这方面的问题，我们在之前有什么方法可以去帮他去规避或者是去考虑吗？像你说的这个问题是比较怎么说呢？首先，当你的问 listing agent， 他想问他，把你所有的 concern 给他问清楚，到底他知道不知道，他有有没有什么 disclose， 对吧？他如果是有想隐瞒什么东西这样的，比如说将来你，当然也可以去跟他跟进。但理论上来说，像你说的，他有一家。租了半年又找了，为什么找了什么？这个东西很难说，因为疫情期间很多现在就是叫什么呃 bankrupt， 有的是 relocation， 有的就就放弃了，有的是是很多方面的原因，所以你先搞清楚。但这个物业的状况，就是比如说你屋顶坏，有没有坏了？那个冷暖系统怎么样了？如果你是代表租客，你提在交接前先去做 inspection， 先把搞清楚了，对吧？搞定了之后，别冷暖系统可能工作不太好，怎么样？让你的小房东的责任先做好
做好之后，将来的 maintenance 是租客的。但在这之前 ，closing 之前，如果是有什么问题，一定是 landlord 负责。房顶那方面，比如说漏水、屋顶、ceiling， 或者是 structure window 漏水，那你就有提出的像房房东要做的。所、so, 以一般情况下，所有的 structure 房顶 outside 都是房东的责任，就这个你不用担心。所、so, 以对客户租的那种这种的，你 location 可以，对你那个客户用途没问题，租金合理，那个这个最重要。你不想 residential， 你说哎呀，那是不是有修晒的东西啦？有人什么什么种大麻了，像这么。如果是 residential 比较 concern， 但是最 commercial 这些东西一般来说不会。就是你只要是价格合理的，设备是好了，其他对对你租客没什么影响。也就是说，我之前也可以就也也要也可以做个 inspection， 或者是和第二个方就跟 lifting agent 去沟通。那当时了，就是你这个 offer 里面就我们那个公司的版本，我写的有个，比如所有的冷暖系统它是工作，对吧？那、呃、如果是要更换，将来是房东的责任。但是在之前 closing 之前，你的 tenant 一定要去检验好。比如，比如说，你不知道这坏的，那个坏的，到最后你过了以后，哎呀，这个不能用，那不能，那就完了。所以一定要标这些名字牌。行，我还有一个问题是接的刚才咱们那个 Alan 那个问题，就是并不是所有的 office 都可以用作 medical， 呃、嗯、呃、uh, ，to be used as medical， right？ 哦，那当时了，那你要就 zoning by law， 你要 check。第一，就 listen agent 他做的这个 office 做哪方面的 professional office medical 行不行，对吧？啊 ，doctor 行不行？或者是 accountant 行不行？说、so, optical 行不行？你都要问，你得搞清楚。你 zoning 白了就比较问一下。大厅的，那个 property management office 先先了解一下。他有些管理公司他不同意，那你就不行了，对吧？他有的是 competition 的问题，有的是其他的问题，所以你得要看一下。OK， 好好好，行，知道了，谢谢。嗯、OK。<咳>呃，同事们再谈谈，还有两点，一点前我们就结束，一点钟结束。你们在那个商业用途方面就很多比较复杂，所以大家一定要小心。租也好，买卖也好，就是说你客户的要求，他的用途一定要适合，不适合的就行。就像我们所有的 offer， 就 commercial offer 买卖、租赁，大我们只有一个最重要的一个 condition， 就是 verified use。一定，他说老师，好多人问 David， 我这个下个 offer 怎么最很重要？我买个厂房，我租一个那 office。这个哪个最重要？最重要，你的 use 一定要 suitable for your client。就像以前我说过一个，这 Miss Saga 十几万、二十万平方尺的那个厂房，他买了，比如说种大麻，那那那个 use 政府不批的，那你你租下来，到时候过了一个月、两个月 closing 之后，哎呀，政府不批了，怎么办？那你不是你的你的 deposit 是 lose 你 all the con 呃 deposit， 那个 say 那个 land 还有追讨你所有的责任。你签了五年，那五年以内你要怎么办呢？你不找了人顶替，那你就就不行了嘛，对吧？所以这个就是大家就一定要小心的注意一下。你好 ，David。来。啊，你好，我想请呃，我叫申呃，我叫飞，我想请问一下，就是说呃，你刚才在培训的时候你提到一句话、哦，刚。嗯，就可能不仅仅适用于商业地产。你说就是我们，你要要我们仅仅记住，就是我们卖的呢是我们的 service， 啊、呃，不是这个产品。我觉得这句话呢，呃，就是说怎么说，就可能我感觉呢有很多的解读，我不知道就是您想告诉我具体想告诉我们什么呢？好 ，OK， 为什么说我们卖的不是产品？我们我们卖的不是那个叫什么？实体的东西，我卖的是你的 service。首先就是说，你作为一个经济，不管 listing 也好， buy 也好，首先你的你的专业知识在什么地方，对吧？你得知道你的专业知识在哪，你的 service 包括哪些范围。所以你知道你的 service， 并不是说我这个房子卖给你了，嗯、呃，我就没事了。人家跟客户在找你，对你这个房子价格啊，好不好？这这个到时候你都没给人家专业的那个知识给给个引导，那当然有什么事，当然他会找你了，是吧？所以。这第一，第二呢？好多人为什么我说有你的 service 呢？有的人就竞争是那个叫什么廉价竞争
，你的 commission 我是经济，你的你的经济我是经济。好，我在买家刚才说的，我给你 rebate 啊，一点五，我给你两个点的 rebate 那东西，以这样的方式类型，就把你的客户追客户也好，抢客户也好，所以这种这个行为就是就怎么说呢？你就是把这个市场搞乱，好多人就把这个市场搞乱。所以这个这个就是说，你不是以廉价，你降低你的那个那个费用来去。就那些把客户抢到手，所以这个就我的意思，就是说你的 service 保障你的 hundred percent 的 service professional service， 并不是用的价钱用什么东西衡量的。所以我的意思就是说，不是卖东西，你是你的 service， 你的 reputation。我主要指的是这方面。我这解答能，你能觉得那还可以吗？还是说你还需要？呃，我倒是没有什么补充的，我就是想知道，就是从您这个角度来，就是说怎么怎么看待这个问题。所以为什么刚那个一开始提到，就是说讲 offer 的时候，那个经济因为减了两个点，然后呢就是说把那个房子拿到了，所以虽然那边当时他从价格方面他体现出来，比人家低了两万，比如说低了三万，呃，他虽然是省也省了他那 H C 也省了他那个费用，但是对于我们经济来说，刚才说的。你减两个点，我也减两个点，我减两点五啊，两点五的点就把它放在抢到。这个就是说，无形的就是恶性循环了。大家都跟着他学，那就是说我们这个市场，就是我们 A 就刚才说我们 base on 我们 work on base on commission， 你这么减，他这么减，就变成恶恶性循环。所以这样情况下，你如果真的是像那个呃那个经济这么做的话，别的经济听说了，别的经济听说就告诉那自己的客户，哎呀，那个人员减的佣金。那他的客户听到哦，那个 David 他他减薪，我也也得减，你也不要减什么，这样就变成一环一环恶性循环，这样就你做不，这个谁也做不成那个地方。所以这个意思就是说，我们作为经济的时候，你不是以减价，不是以你廉价劳动力这么来吸获取你的客户，一定你的设备、你的 experience、你的呃专业知识，这样才是最重要的。所以 ，listen 就跟买家进行对要，大家都应该知道，碰到这情况应该说服你的客户该怎么样做，对吧？就是说，刚才说的那个，你是买家进行，你一开始把你的底牌亮出来，哎，我不要考虑钱了，你给给给多少钱？你的八根炮就没有了，对吧？所以，经常和同事说，自己给自己买房子，比如有的经济，他说我现在就该告诉对方，我不要佣金了，好，你不用更好，对方就跟你谈价的时候，你就没有机会赚取。所以就谈个好价钱了，所以这个是我们需要自己知道，也知道让客户客户也知道就行。大家都会讨论，有些比如说你觉得有这么想的都可以，没问题的。怎么样？大家还有两分钟。David， 我再问一个问题好了。嗯，好的。请问一下，那个 deposit 买房子的 deposit， 我我特别要求对方，我如果我是 list agent 的话，特别要求对方或 operate agent 百分之五以上的 deposit。呃，你是就是 residential 的吧？对，是抢 offer 还不抢 offer？ 哦、呃，不，如果是不抢的话，这个我为什么这么说呢？就是这里面就是你作为那个 seller 当当，你可以要普通 r e s e r 我们是 five percent 对吧？一般都是看 common practice。你说要求高，你的有个，比如说通常你认为要是 ten percent， 但是你这样的就变成。Out of market 那个 common practice 了，是。所以你有个理由，为什么你要高？你就让人知道能说服人家。比如说，我这个是拍卖房，拍卖房呢，就是我希望更高的 deposit， 对吧？有这个可能性，你会，你会。但如果是 regular 情况下，你本我们按照 common practice 怎么说？就除非刚才说你知道有什么问题，会预见到什么东西了，那你
，那你会要求高一点。你会写的 remark 上面写那种，对吧？但有的人就愿意出这么高的 department， 那可以了，他就说了，他如果他觉得有的反感 uncomfortable， 他就可以不能参加那个 bid 了，对吧？是是是。对，这个没有规定，就是我们是 go by common practice， 嗯，一般是这样。好，谢谢，谢谢。对，这顺便说一句，就是现在最近好几个同事也想 offer， 今天也好几个同事在给我发个信息的，啊、呃，想 offer 的时候，你是现在拜 email 就不是拜那个 in person， 这个情况下我就建议 listing agent 你一定要提醒各个买家经纪 buy agent， all deposit must be in money order bank draft attached to a copy of offer。所以你 email 然后你的 offer letter 你 attach 你的 copy of bank draft 和 bank 呃 money order， 为什么这样呢？你如果是今天晚上接 offer 了 ，offer 收到十个二十个，我选了 top three 或者选择其中一个，如果那那个连 bank draft 都没有 ，not ready， 你怎么能接受这个 offer 呢？哪怕这个 offer 比人家高两万三万，我都不敢接，因为你第二天你可能就反悔不给我交 deposit， right？ 所以我希望就是你的立场也要提醒你的所有的。那个 buy agent 参与的嘛 ，get ready bank job a copy attached to your offer. OK， 大家就立信一定行。这边你是买家基金也是一样，为了当然为了做成这个单，也为了这样呃那个立信就是哎呀，我今天客户真的是要的，我就把 money order ready and send offer with a copy together. 所、so, 以这个就是说，你就只能 secure 你的那个一个 offer。作为立信基金，你可以 secure。保障你那个 seller best interest， 除非买家今天你也可以知道，我 try 我的 best 可以能够拿到这个 offer， 所以这个两个都是对双方都有好处，大家留意这一点，好吗？嗯，请问呢，抢 offer 的话 ，deposit 可不可以要要求高一点呢？百高于百分之五？啊，不会，就是正常，就是百分之五左右。哦 ，OK。怎么样？大家如果没什没什么，我们就 call for the day 了。希望，呃，下次我们下个 topic， 呃 ，next topic I be doing I think we start from commercial lease. 呃、uh, ，we see how to find commercial property for lease. How to prepare the offer for lease. So there's a second next topic we do as scheduled in the office dashboard with the posted already I think so. Thank you, David. <laughs> 谢谢大家 ，Thank you everyone. So we、we'll、see you next week. And、uh, anything, any suggestion you can bring to me, or、uh, WeChat, we email, and then we can talk about it later. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.